Good morning. My name is Gabriel Hillard. I'm here to say the opening prayer on Good behalf morning, of the nation. Fellowship. 
He Please stand up, weeks. bow your heads, and close your eyes. January 15th isn't a day off, but it's a day on for the Making Mayhem and our FBBC Mass Choir. Our choir will be singing in the stands for MLK Day as the Making Mayhem play the Quad City Storm at 2 p.m. inside of the Macon Coliseum. Visit Ticketmaster.com to purchase your tickets today. This Wednesday, January 17th at 6.30 p.m., we're getting back to the basics of Christianity. Join Pastor Tolan Morgan as he breaks down the Word of God in Bible study. Grab your pencils, your papers, and especially your Bible, and let's study God's Word together. Our Girls in Action and Act Teens present a Queens in Training Etiquette class on January 27th at 10 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Girls in Action and Act Teens is a group for young girls aged 4 through 17. For more information, email gia.actteens at fbbchome.org. On January 28th, we're hosting a ministry fair immediately following service to ensure that all shipmates have an opportunity to use their spiritual gifts. Click on the Ministries tab of fbbchome.org and begin praying about which ministry to join. We're excited about helping you find your place in ministry. Our next new member orientation will take place on February 3rd at 8.30 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall. During this session, all new shipmates will learn what we believe as a church, get acclimated to all things fellowship, and not only will you receive a free continental breakfast, you'll also get a tour of the entire campus. Register to attend by clicking on the Forms and Docs section of fbbchome.org and click on new member orientation. For more information, email membership at fbbchome.org. On February 4th, immediately following service, we will host a small business expo inside of the FBBC gym. This is an opportunity for the community to take advantage of the goods and services provided by small business owners in our community. If you are a small business owner and are interested in becoming a vendor, register by clicking on the events tab of fbbchome.org and click on the flyer that's on your screen. For more information on these and other events, visit our website at fbbchome.org or follow us on social media so you can always know what's happening here at the ship. Until next time, have a great week. Good morning. Like I said, I'm Gabriel Hillard, and I'm here to say the opening prayer on behalf of Flint Nation. Please stand up, close your eyes, and bow your heads. Lord, we would like to thank you for this day that you've allowed us to all wake up and make it to church, Lord. We're thankful for everything that you do, the foods on our plates, the clothes on our backs, and the roofs over our heads, Lord. We would like to take this time to thank you and ask for a successful service today. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Is anybody glad that you're in the house of the Lord today? Is anybody glad that you made it to the house of the Lord today? If you made it to the house of the Lord today, that means you woke up this morning. You got a reason to be praising God. If you made it here today, that means you have a reason to praise God. So then let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord for his kindness. Praise ye the Lord for his goodness. Praise ye the Lord for all of his mercies. Praise ye the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen. God is good, amen. You all may be seated. Do we have any first-time visitors in the house today? Any first-time visitors? If we have any first-time visitors, please stand. There we go. There we go. They're standing here. They're standing all over. They're standing all over. Look, if y'all are sitting anywhere near them, please shake their hands. Please speak to them. Please speak to them. We want to tell y'all welcome. Welcome to the Fellowship Bible Baptist Church, and we are so grateful that you all decided to make fellowship your home. If we have any visitors online, we do not just call you our online audience, we call you our victorious viewers. Y'all give our victorious viewers a hand. 
wherever you're watching from, let us know where you're watching from. Just type something in the comments, and we have people online that will give you a digital handshake. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. I have just a few announcements. I have a few announcements. First of all, our WOW prayer breakfast, pr prayer breakfast, excuse me, our women of worth. Women of worth, y'all make some noise. All right, all right, all right. All right. That is this coming Saturday, January the 20th. That is this coming Saturday at 11 a.m. at the Wellston Center, 155 Maple Street here in Warner Robins, Georgia. Now, before y'all get too excited, if you have not registered, it's too late. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you missed the registration. <laughs> Sorry about that. But we do want to let you know that this is going on. So if you did make the registration, be prepared Saturday morning to be at the Wellston Center, 155 Maple Street. The guest speaker is going to be none other than our own First Lady Morgan. Y'all give God a hand clap of praise for her. She's going to be the guest speaker for that event. So to all of y'all that registered, please make sure you attend that event. Amen. Then the next thing, our Small Business Expo. Our spa, so all my business owners, make some noise. There you go, there you go, there you go, there you go. So our Small Business Expo. This event is going to take place uh, February the 4th. This is the first Sunday in February. It's going to happen right after church. Okay, it's going to happen right after church in the gym from 12 to 4. From 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. Now, I need y'all to listen to this. I need y'all to listen because I, I heard all y'all business owners. But we got some, some rules we got to follow. This expo is for any state registered owned business. So if your business is not registered with the state, it don't count. <laughs> yeah, if it's not registered with the state, you cannot participate in this event. So please make sure that you are registered before you uh, go on there and try to be a part of this. Uh, you do not have to be a member of FBBC though. So you do have to be registered with the state. However, you do not have to be a member. Amen. So uh, the last day to register is January 30th. Did y'all hear that? If you have not yet registered to be a part of the Small Business Expo, the last day to register is January the 30th. Registration is going on right now. So y'all make sure y'all go and uh, do the registration. There is a, I need y'all to hear me real good. There is a $25 non-refundable fee. I'm going to say it to the church. That side of the church ain't listening to me. It's a $25 non-refundable fee <laughs> uh, for each vendor. And each vendor must provide a minimum $10 raffle gift. Okay? All right. So y'all make sure that y'all go and register for this. This is a wonderful event you get to see in there's a lot of businesses that Fellowship has. There's a lot of different resources within Fellowship. We don't have to go around looking for stuff because a lot of things we need are right here in our church. Amen? Amen. All right. I'm excited about this one. Y'all, February is going to be lit because Lit Nation is going live in the month of February. Lit Nation is going live in the month of February. February. So, I need everybody to, y'all pull out your phones and y'all make note of this date. February the 2nd is our Lit Nation pizza party. Our Lit Nation pizza party is February the 2nd. February the 2nd from 6.30 to 8.30 in the Reed Building. Now, the purpose for this event, this event, y'all will have a chance to meet all of the Lit Nation staff, and we're going to let you guys know all of our plans for the year. And y'all, we got some big, 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 big stuff going on that our young people will be doing this year. So y'all make sure that y'all are at that event. Now, there is a registration. We need y'all to register. If you and your kids are going to come, we need y'all to register. Registration starts tomorrow. We need y'all to register so we can know how much pizza we need. <laughs> so we can know how much food we need to get. So we need everybody to make sure that you go on our uh, church website and make sure that you register for this event. Let me give you a little, little, little brief overview of what Lit Nation is going to look like. To all my parents who got kids between the ages of four and six, stand up. If you got kids four, five, and six, stand up. Parents, four, five, and six. Yeah, four, five, and six. Four, five, and six. Okay. If you have kids four, five, and six, for all of y'all that are standing, 
we have a new program that we're starting called Kingdom Kids. It's called Kingdom Kids. This program is for four, five, and six-year-olds. And y'all, we're going to work on stuff like alpha, the alphabet, helping them learn their shapes, their, their colors, sight words, all that kind of stuff. Everything that they're currently working on in school, they'll be able to come here and get help with that kind of stuff. So this is our Kingdom Kids. Y'all give our Kingdom Kids a big round of applause. Y'all can have a seat. And then we already have our Royal Ambassadors and our Girls in Actions programs. Our Royal Ambassadors ministers to our 7 to 17 year olds uh, men and our Girls in Action slash Act Team Ministry ministers to our 7 to 17 year olds. And then we got something new going on. I need everybody in this church that is between the ages of 18 and 24 to stand up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody that's 18 to 24. Is this everybody? All right. Everybody that's standing, y'all listen to me. Y'all listen to me. <laughs> Is any of y'all standing cheating? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. 18 to 24, y'all check this out. We got a new program going on. So you know how they got decor, they got the game changers, they got all that stuff. Well, y'all, we got ours. And it's called The Vibe. It's called The Vibe. 18 to 24, we are The Vibe. Y'all be here at that meeting on February the 2nd. Y'all make sure y'all are here, okay? Make sure y'all are here. We got some major plans for our 18 to 24 group. Church, y'all give our 18 to 24 group one more round of applause. Y'all may be seated. Y'all may be seated. So y'all, Lit Nation is going live in February. We got some major things going on. Y'all make sure y'all stay tuned to the announcements. Make sure you're following our Facebook page, our Instagram page. You'll see a lot of our announcements because we about to go live, y'all. Lit Nation about to take off, amen? Amen, amen. Uh, also, don't forget, next week, Youth Church, next week, in the Reed Building. We have Youth Church starting next week. Uh, Drop-off is at 9.20 a.m., at 920. Bring all the kids. Bring all of them. You hear me? Drop your kids off at the Reed building and we'll take good care of them. We make sure they have snacks and they are learning about Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. And then last announcement, y'all. Wednesday in the Word, as you may have heard, pastors doing this series on Christianity. What is it? Christianity 101. Y'all want to make sure that you are here because he's in an amazing series, y'all. We cannot call ourselves Christians if we don't know why we're Christians. If we don't know what it means to be Christians, we can't call ourselves followers of Christ. So let's make sure that we are here and we are studying the word together, amen? Our mom group is about to come, and after our Lit Nation mom group comes, y'all, the next speaking voice that y'all hear will be none other than our pastor, Tolan Morgan. He got a nice jacket on over there, y'all see that? <laughs> so, <laughs> so after our dance group has come and done their mom, y'all make sure to stand and let's make our pastor feel welcome. Amen. All right. Out of you. As we 
touch you. If you need a healing, I need you to sing this. We receive it. And one more sing. Go crazy on this one, all right? I'm believing for God to do something. Let's go. As we touch you with God, as we touch you with God, we receive. As we touch you with God, we But I know it's coming. I don't have to see it, but I know it's coming. I don't have to see it, but I know it's coming. I need you to learn that. I don't have to see it, but I know it's coming. I don't have to see it, but I know. I don't have to see it, but I know. I don't have to see it, Shall it not come to pass? I don't have to see it, but I know it's coming. Everything I need. I don't have to see it, but I know it's coming. I don't have to see it, but I know. I don't have to see it, but I know it's coming. I feel it happening now. I don't have to see it, but I know it's coming. Somebody get ready for your breakthrough. What was it? has some statistics set against you let me see you where you at it looked like the numbers weren't in your favor but what if I told you what was improbable what probably wouldn't happen God says is he's about to turn around in your favor not even because of what you've done but just because you're his child and he's God so whew, lift up your hand say what was invisible shall be visible Shall be possible. Can I just hear that? One was invisible. Yeah, shall be.
It shall be visible And what was impossible What was impossible shall be possible. Come on, everybody, say it. What was invisible.
is impossible shall be possible. I want to hear the church say it. What was invisible shall be visible. Shall be visible. And what was impossible? What was impossible shall be possible. Come on, church, say it again. What was invisible? What was invisible? I want to hear the whole church say it. Shall be visible. And what was impossible? Shall be possible. Can you put worship on your lips if you believe it? Don't clap your hands. Put worship on your lips. Don't clap your hands. Put worship on your lips. Come on, send up worship in this place. Oh my. Oh my. This is what we came to do today. Came to worship our risen Christ. For God can do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Somebody just lift your hands and embrace His presence in this place. What was invisible shall be visible and what was impossible shall be possible. Say it till you believe it. What was invisible shall be visible. Shall be visible. What was impossible. Clap your hands and give him glory if you believe him. Come on, clap your hands and give him glory. The sky is the limit to what I can have. The sky is the limit to what I can have. The sky is the limit to what I can have. The sky is the limit to what I can have. Oh my, the sky is the limit. Perform it today. 
If you believe that, say it. So believe and receive it. God will perform it today. So believe and receive it. God will perform it today. Clap your hands and give Him praise, everybody. Clap your hands like you got victory. Clap your hands like you see the invisible. Clap your hands like what the enemy thought you couldn't have, you gonna get it. Clap your hands like it's already yours. I, I need some faith believers. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the hearts of men the things that God has in store for you. And that's why no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. I declare over you sickness won't prosper. Mental health won't prosper. Depression won't prosper. You've got victory. Now make a sound like you got victory. Tap your neighbor to your neighbor, excuse me. 2024 already has victory in my path. Excuse me while I praise him. God has already done some stuff for you just within the first 14 days of this year that deserves the best praise that you can give. seen the hand of God. the Lord is, there is liberty to give him glory. Somebody's already seen a miracle in 14 days. Praise him like you've seen something that only God can do. unto God with the voice of triumph. Come on. Hallelujah. Everyone, everyone standing, everyone standing. I 
promise on sweet milk and grits that those mind dancers are anointed. See, there's a difference between a performance and a ministry. They don't just perform, they minister under the unction of the Holy Ghost. Come on, help me celebrate our Lit Nation youth ministry today. No, we can do better than that. Come on, give God praise for them. My, 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 my. That was absolutely awesome. While you're standing, speak to everybody within your immediate circumference. Say good morning to them. Whether you know them or not, say good morning to them. Those of you that are in our virtual sanctuary, we greet you in the love of Jesus Christ today. We praise God that you are part of this worship experience and that the power of God and the joy of Jesus is saturating the space where you are right now, wherever you are, in whatever context life finds you in. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And we praise God for you today. Ooh, I feel God in here. I feel God in here. It is why you come to church. You ain't just coming to see people. I want to have an experience with the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. While you're standing, I want to summon your senses and invite your intellect to the book of Jonah. We began this series last Sunday entitled Back on Track. How many of you believe God is getting you back on track this year? Come on, thank God he's already getting you back on track. He's getting you back on track. And we want to continue this series today. We work through chapter one. Let's go to chapter two, Jonah chapter number two. <clears throat> and I want to I want to uh, actually read the last verse of chapter one, which is actually the introduction to chapter two. Jonah chapter one, verse number 17. Your Bible should read, Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Chapter number 2, verse 1 says, Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly and said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I, and you heard my voice, for you had cast me into the deep in the midst of the seas, and the floods compassed me about all your billows and your waves passed me over. Then I said, I am cast out of your sight, yet will I look again toward your holy temple. The waters compassed me about even to the soul, the depth closed me round about, the weeds were wrapped about my head. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet you have brought me up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in unto you into your holy temple. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. But I will sacrifice unto you with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. And the Lord spoke unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. I want to tag this text. I've reached my turning point. You may be seated in the Lord's church. <clears throat> Dr. 
Dr. Tony Evans once told a story of a time he was reflecting when he was a student in elementary school. And he recalled a time that he loved and looked forward to the teacher providing volunteer, volunteer opportunities for students to come and to write on the chalkboard. He looked forward to that moment. He would always try to be the first one to volunteer to write on the chalkboard. And he remembered very vividly that when he would go to the chalkboard, if he wrote down the correct answer, he would be esteemed by his teacher. But if he wrote down the wrong answer, the teacher would erase the wrong answer and give him a chance to address the problem all over again. That's pretty much how forgiveness works, church. Forgiveness is the ability to erase your mistake and start all over again. Since you missed it, ladies and gentlemen, teachers don't put children out of class because they got the wrong answer. They just erase their mistakes and give them another chance to try to get it right. And I know several of you are spiritually bougie. So you've never made a mistake, but for the rest of us, we are thankful that God handles us with a pencil and not a pen. Maybe you don't remember a pencil, but when they made the pencil, before you could ever use it, it was built with an eraser. The maker of the pencil presume that whoever uses it will make a mistake. So you don't have to throw away the pencil or the person who uses it. Just flip it on the other side. <laughs> Erase your error and try it again. You should have missed your cue there, but since you didn't, let me just help you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're not thankful for nothing else, being back on track means God gives you a chance. <laughs> to erase your mistakes. <laughs> and start all over again. That's really the discipline of the discourse tucked away in Jonah chapter two. And ladies and gentlemen, we find Jonah in an interesting place of prayer. The close of chapter one is the introduction of chapter two. As a matter of fact, Jonah chapter one verse 17 is the envelope of Jonah chapter two. Verse 17 says, after they threw Jonah overboard, the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and he was there three days and three nights. <laughs> that means all of chapter 2 is tucked away in Jonah chapter 1, verse 17. Everything that happened in Jonah chapter 2 happened within verse 17. But since you read it too fast, can I tell you how to shout when you read the Bible? Dent, the text says, the Lord had prepared. I'm going to try it again for those that have never been to English class. It doesn't say the Lord needed to prepare. It doesn't say the Lord prepared. It doesn't say the Lord was preparing. It says the Lord had prepared. That's past perfect tense. 
that means that before Jonah was ever thrown overboard God had already spoke to a whale and said I'm going to catch this fool before he drowns y'all don't know how to get happy you messed up and was on your way to death but God already had a way to catch you before you drown God already had a way out before you was on your way to death I thought I had about 20 of y'all that would testify God didn't have to work it out he had already worked out how I was going to come out of what I was going to be thrown in and God had prepared and God had a great fish in case y'all missed it church as far as God is concerned what makes God provider is that he sees before provide I'm gonna try it again provide Pro provision vision meaning to see pro being before God sees before it happens you still missed it that's why y'all God is omniscient and omnipresent because God's solution is always older than his problem he never works out the problem after the problem he never tries to figure out the solution after the problem happens the problem is waiting to catch up to the solution and Jonah had prepared God had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah to prevent him from drowning you got that church then that introduces to us what is the conditional and temporal response of Jonah in Jonah chapter 1 watch it verse 1 says then Jonah prayed you don't know how to see the text so I'll try it Jonah turn the intestines and the stomach of a whale into his altar because sometimes church the worst place to be in is the best place to pray in it's stank down here but I'm praying in this nasty situation this is not where I, I, I need to be or want to be but I'm turning a nasty situation into my prayer altar oftentimes church the worst place to be in is the best place to pray in this is an interesting place of prayer this is an interesting place of prayer it says then Jonah prayed the key term there is not pray it's then then Jonah prayed you and I have to ask this question because this is a critical turning point in Jonah's life because uh, Sandra Williams Jonah ended up doing what he said he wasn't going to do uh, when he got on that boat in chapter 1 this ecumenical boat they told everybody start calling on your God and Jonah said I'm not calling on God I'm going to sleep they woke up Jonah and said man what's wrong with you don't you see this storm out here you need to start calling on your God and Jonah was in an outright deliberate conscious rebellion and protest against God to the point that he said, I'm not talking to God. But verse 2 says, then, Jonah prayed. You, you need to ask me, what changed in Jonah? What shifted Jonah from protest to prayer? What shifted Jonah from insubordination to intercession? What changed in Jonah's life that made him go do what he said he wasn't going to do? I'm glad you asked. Verse Jonah chapter 1 verse 3 says he went down to Joppa. Jonah chapter 1 verse 3 says he went down to a ship. 
Jonah chapter 1 verse 5 says he went down to the sides of the ship. Jonah chapter 1 verse 5 says he went to sleep, which means he laid down. Jonah 1 verse 15 says they threw him overboard, which means he went further down in the water. Jonah chapter 1 verse 17 says God had a fish to swallow him up. He went down further into the belly of a fish. Can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, if you follow in the Bible through all that quotation, his life was going in one direction. Because rebellion church has a way of sending you to an unexpected low. Y'all slow, but let me help you. When Jonah woke up that morning and decided he was going to protest God, he never thought in a million years that his protest would have him ended up in the guts of a fish. Ladies and gentlemen, you got to be careful because a conscious disobedience can lead to an unconscious dissent. Rebellion will take you lower than you want to go. Have mercy. Nobody in their right mind said, today I'm going to see the guts of a fish. But when you rebel against God, it takes you to a low that you never thought you'd go to. Y'all remember that boy in Luke chapter 15? When he walked away from his daddy's house, he never saw a pig peeing in his future. You got to be careful, ladies and gentlemen, because when you rebel against God, it'll take you to a low you never thought you'd go in your life. Nobody ever suspect when I woke up today by the end of the day I'm going to be in the belly of a fish. Reason why he prayed y'all is because his life had gone so low. It went to such an unexpected low that the low he was in forced him to call on the God he didn't want to deal with. Okay y'all missed it. Uh, I, I, I promise after this sermon I will be your friend but some of y'all are not in church because you love God some of you in church because you hit a low and when you go so low you ain't got but one way to look when you go so low you can't look no lower you got to force your way up and say I will look unto the hills from which comes my help. Some of y'all ain't in here because God is good. Some of you in here because life is life in you and you have ran out of resources, you ran out of options and now you want Jesus because you done hit rock bottom. You ain't fooling me. What brought you to church is because life got bad. And when you wouldn't come in here when it was good. Life threw something your way that made you hit an unexpected low. Then Jonah prayed. Because he's gone to a low that he never expected in his life. On some level, he went to a low, watch me church, that he presumed a prophet couldn't go. And he went to this low because it had to break his spiritual arrogance. Because in his mind, I'm God's prophet. I can't go this low. Why y'all looking at Jonah with that tone of voice? God has allowed your life to go so low because you thought saints can't go as low as you've gone. Be careful how you put your attitude behind your collar. Be, be, be careful how you put your attitude around your little church position. Be careful how you put your attitude around your little position because you're, you're something in church that you'll never be in the world. God has a way of 
of humbling arrogant church people just like he has a way of humbling arrogant unchurched people. You'll find yourself in the belly of a whale. You'll find yourself in a place where you think prophets can't go. Let me remind you, church, pride comes before destruction. I wish I had somebody help me preach it. And a haughty spirit before a fall. You can't afford to be arrogant because arrogance leads one way. Then Jonah prayed. This was a prayer of refocus. Because the text says when he prayed, y'all, he considered where he was and got so low he had to look back to what he left. Y'all don't read the Bible? Listen, he said while he's in the guts of this fish praying, he said he's going to send his prayer to the holy temple. Now wait a minute, y'all. There are no windows in this well. He can't see where he's going. He's in the inside of a well, but he got church on his mind. You missed all that. If he got church on his mind, y'all, then that's the presence of God's local location. You missed it. The temple was the local address of the presence of God, which is the thing he was running from in chapter 1. They asked him where you're going. He said, I'm trying to run from the presence of God. But when he got down in the guts of this well, the thing he was running from is the thing he wanted to run to. Sometimes, church, your lowest point is a turning point. And sometimes you got to get to that low point so it'll make you turn around. And go back to going after the God that you claim you had an attitude with. I, here's what I found out about God. God will let you be mad at him because he know after a while you're going to need him. It's just like a child. A parent will look at their kid and you go in that room have a little attitude all you want to because in a while you're going to want some money. And you can't call nobody but me. The same person you got an attitude with, you're going to turn around and need them. Ladies and gentlemen, that's just how God is. It don't even worth your energy to be mad at God. Because He got, one day you're going to turn around and you're going to need him. It's a prayer of refocus. I don't know who I'm preaching to. But the best place you're in right now is a low place. Because that low place is turning you around to go back to the God that you walked away from. Your low point is a turning point because it'll make you pray and go after the God you claim you didn't want to pray to. Do I have a witness in here? It's not, a, it's not just a point of refocus, church, but it's a point of revival. It's the point of revival. Look, church, uh, Jonah's down there praying in the belly of this well. And the Bible says the Lord brought up his life from corruption. Now, this is interesting, church. He says the Lord brought up my life, which suggests he saw himself dead. If the Lord brought up my life from corruption, that word in the Hebrew means destruction. He literally saw himself dead. Which is why he told him in chapter 1, throw me overboard. I'm already dead in my own eyes. See, ladies and gentlemen, the tragedy of life is being dead while you're still alive. 
See, this is the point of the passage. What Jonah has to own that what he's in is his fault. Because had you obeyed me when I told you what to do and where to go, you wouldn't be in the situation you're in right now. You will reach your turning point, ladies and gentlemen, when you stop blaming other people for your fall. When you stop trying to blame everybody else for some stuff you ought to be accountable for. That thing didn't happen because of them, it happened because of you. If all you deep people, it wasn't the devil either. It was you. He didn't trick you. You lied to yourself. He says this was a time of revival because now I had to come face to face with my own bad decision. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know how to help you today other than this. Chapter 1, God gave them the power to make a hard decision. But in chapter 2, God gave them the power to redeem a bad decision. You are in this fish because you consciously walked away from God's will for your life. And the fact that you back in prayer to God and said that God brought your life up means that it was revived because you saw yourself dead from your own decision. Thanks be to God, God knows how to resurrect you from your own mess. I said God knows how to resurrect you from your own, your own mess. He'll bring your life back up because he had already been clear to, this, to, to the man of God, had been clear to God that God, where I fell, was in the depths of the sea. He gives this poetry, y'all, about weeds being around his head being at the depths of the sea in the mountains. Well, he didn't know that because he's still in the belly of a whale. He's only given imaginary language to what he believes is around him outside of the whale. Lord have mercy. But while he's inside the well, being inside the well is preserving his life and resurrecting his life because being outside of it is worse. Lord have mercy today. I don't know who I don't know who I'm preaching to, but you've got to get to a point that you stop complaining about what you're in and start thanking God that it could be worse because outside of what you're in is actually worse than what you in. It's a prayer of refocus. It's a prayer of revival. It's not only a prayer of revival, y'all. It's a prayer of rejoicing. Listen at what Jonah said. Jonah said, I'm in this fish's belly, but uh, since I'm here, I'm going to give him a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Y'all ain't going to see that, do you? That man is not only having altar in the well, he having praise and worship in the well. He says, I'm going to give him a sacrifice of thanksgiving. That word thanksgiving in the Hebrew church means toda in the Hebrew. It means to sing a song with extended hands. I'm going to try it again. He's inside the guts of this well. And the Bible says he's got hands lifted singing a song. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what you don't know is in Jonah chapter 2, verses 2 through 9, there are at least six quotes from the book of Psalms. That means the prayer wasn't just his internal position. It was the lyrics of music from the church's hymn book that when he was outside the well, 
he was at church and remembered something happened in church that could sustain him in an unexpected low place he was able to pull from the songs of the Lord's hymn book and lift them up in the echo location of this well. Wells know how to sing all by themselves. They send messages to each other through sounds that cannot be uttered. But, but Jonah says, since I'm here, I'm going to give him praise. Well, ladies and gentlemen, how do you give God praise in the belly of a whale? Anybody want to know how? It's a belly. Still slow. If it's a belly, it means everything in it is supposed to break up. Everything in it is supposed to be devoured and destroyed and broken. But Jonah is in the belly. He's not broken. He still got his right mind. He can lift up his voice. He can lift up his hands. He can sing his song. Since y'all acting slow, he says, I'm going to give God a thank you because what I'm in should have broke me, but it didn't break me. And since I'm still here, I'm going to give him glory. I need about a hundred of y'all. I'll make number 101 who testify I got a belly praise I'm in something but it didn't break me I'm in something but it didn't steal my joy where the people that, that can thank God that you in it but it hasn't broken you yet and since it hasn't broken you you got to send up a thanksgiving Tell somebody, excuse me, what I sent up a thanksgiving to God. Because I should have been broken already. What I mean is designed to kill me. It's designed to destroy me. But I'm still here in the midst of it all. See, you struggle to give God thanks unless you got reasons to thank him. But Jonah says, I don't have a reason to thank him for what I'm in. I thank him while I'm still in it. You don't know how to get happy. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you don't thank him for all things. You thank him in all things. Paul said, in all things give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Can I, thank, can I tell you why you ought to thank him? Because again, church, what started with disobedience ended in mercy. Uh, Adam and Eve were disobedient. And what began in disobedience says I could have killed y'all because I told y'all this was fatal fruit. You were supposed to die. But you walked out of here and I covered you on the way out. Because what began in disobedience ended in mercy. Jacob decided he wanted to rebel against God's will and actually fight God. God said I could have killed you. Instead, I let you walk away from this wrestling match with a limp and a changed name. Because what began in disobedience ended in mercy. David says, I was the shepherd, the sheep of God, and I was in green pastures, but I walked in the valley of the shadow of death. I could have let you die there, but my rod and my staff came and comforted you because what began in no disobedience ended in mercy Peter you denied me when I needed you the most but after I got up out the grave I came back to get you and you became the first post Pentecostal preacher because what began in disobedience ended in mercy and it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because some of y'all been disobedient but he woke your tail up this morning. Do I got anybody in here that I thank God this mercy endureth forever? Tell two people I got mercy on my life. 
I got mercy on my life. I got mercy on my life. I ain't talking to all of y'all. I'm only talking to some of y'all. You see, ladies and gentlemen, people will leave you off of what they heard. God will stay with you off of what he knows. He knows you crazy. He know you ain't no good. He know you full of hell. He know you sinful. But he says, I'll never leave you. I feel like preaching now. No forsake you. Do I got anybody that'll thank God for his mercy? I got a thanksgiving on my lips. Can I hear somebody just start thanking God that what you in hasn't broken you yet? That the thing that swallowed you up has not broken you yet? Is it anybody in here got to thank you, Jesus? You ain't got all the money you need, but you got to thank you, Jesus. You ain't got everything you want, but you got to thank you, Jesus. With your hands lifted up, with a song in your mouth, while you in the belly of the well. I ain't waiting for him to bring me out. I'm going to give him praise while I'm still in it. Because I will bless the Lord. Not sometimes, but at all times. And his praise shall continue. Can I tell you why you ought to thank him? Jonah is in a nasty place having church to God because God sent a fish to save a disobedient preacher from drowning and he's in the guts of this well praying and singing y'all ready and the last verse of the chapter says and God spoke to the well And told the whale, it's time to let him go. And the Bible says, Ernest, the whale just didn't open its mouth and let Jonah walk out. The text says, look bro, it vomited Jonah. Y'all making me. Ladies and gentlemen, when you figure out how to get back to God in your stinky place, God will make what's holding you sick of you. I said when you figure out how to get your wretched tail back to God, the thing that's holding you, God will make it sick of you. Because you think you sick of it. No, it's sick of you. And vomiting means you coming out quickly. Touch somebody and tell them, neighbor, I'm coming out quickly. This going to be suddenly. Because what's holding me is about to be sick of me.
All right, let's test it. I need you to start praising God till your neighbor gets sick of you. Till they start looking at you like you're getting on their nerves. Till they start looking at you like it don't take all that. All the hell with you. You don't know what belly I'm in. And I got to give God praise until this thing gets sick of me. Depression is getting sick of you. Being broke is getting sick of you. Because you keep giving him glory. I quit. I quit. For all of y'all that read this text. And you're skeptics. You're saying to yourself, it's not possible for a man to stay three days and three nights in the belly of a whale and still come out alive. I know that's what you're saying. Because you smart and you got a little education. And you saying to yourself, the acid. In the guts of the whale. Should have burned and evaporated him. Immediately. And for all of y'all. Who's struggling. To believe this story. I got one thing for you. If you don't believe it, Jesus did. Because Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12, verse number 40, as Jonah stayed three days and three nights in the belly of the well, so shall the Son of Man Stay three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And if Jonah can come out on the third day, my Jesus can come out on the third day. Do I got anybody that'll tell God thank you for giving me a turning point and bringing me out three days later? Good night, church. May the Lord God bless you real good. Would y'all do me a favor? Get behind somebody. Get behind their back. And I need you to help them get ready for their release. And tell them, neighbor, this how you gonna come out. Push them real quick. Tell them that's how fast you're going to come out. Because whatever's holding you is going to get sick of you. Do I got anybody here that'll testify? Come on, Tonto, let's ride. Ooh, is it anybody here that's ready to come out? The Bible says that when you start praising him, he'll snatch you out. Have I got a witness here? As a matter of fact, praise ought to be the result of you coming out. The Bible says let the redeemed of the Lord feel like preaching here. Say so. Whom he has redeemed out of the hand of the enemy. Tap somebody and tell them neighbor. Y'all got to help me preach it today. Tell them neighbor. I'm being pushed out now. And since I'm out, I got to give him glory. Because I'm not going to praise him in. And not praise him when I get out. The Bible. 
Bible says that when he vomited him out, he vomited him out on dry land. Y'all slept on that. I said the Bible says when he vomited him out, he vomited him out on dry land. Y'all still sleeping here. If he was in the belly of the well, he was down deep in the water. But when he came out, he came out higher than what he was in the water. Tap your neighbor, tell him neighbor, when I come out this time, I'm coming out. Lord have mercy. On higher ground, I'm coming out higher than I was. So I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Tap somebody and tell them, neighbor, we going to a higher level. I said we going high. Lord, hand this here to a higher level. Anybody here? Ready to go higher to a higher level when you come out this time. You will be on higher ground. Tap somebody and tell them, neighbor, I feel like preaching here. Tell them, neighbor, I'm going higher in the Lord. When I come out this time, I'm on the higher ground and that's what happened one flag on Calvary's here Jesus took down the cross of Calvary and they laid him in another man's tomb and he stayed there all night Friday he stayed there all night Saturday but on the third day he said Jonah stay there for three days and three nights cause I was the one that sent the whale to save his life and Jesus said that's me I'm going in the earth for three days and three nights but on the third day I'm getting up I wish I had a church here but I Power in my hand. I feel revival in here. Tell somebody, neighbor, I'm back now. And since I'm back, I'm going to open my mouth and told her, y'all slept on that. I'm going to open my mouth and told her, told her means I'm going to sing my song with my hands up because my hands up is a sign of life. Not let everything, I said let everything that's been brought back from the dead. Lift your hands and give him glory. Thank you, Jesus, for bringing me out. Tell him thank you for bringing you out. Don't you let nobody steal your praise because God is making what's holding you sick of you. And now that you're out, let everything, I said let everything, maybe y'all need to reflect on something. Tap somebody on the shoulder and tell them neighbor, uh uh-uh, get your preacher voice off. Neighbor, tell them neighbor, tragedies are commonplace. All kinds of diseases, people are slipping away. The economy is down and people can't get enough pay. But as for me, all I can say is thank you, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all we've done. 
for me. Let everything give him praise. Stop looking at me and give him glory. Ain't he all right? Won't he bring you out? Yeah. Do me a favor, talk to my tell them I'm back now. You can't shut me up. You had your turn, but now he brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. And I got to open my mouth and give him glory. Now listen, y'all. I've been preaching all week, but I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. And when you got the Holy Ghost, your flesh may be weak, but the Holy Ghost will give you power to do what you gotta do. Tell somebody, neighbor, I got the power now, and now I got it. I got to give him glory. So y'all watch me while I praise him, because I believe if I praise him, somebody else is coming out of your belly. Somebody else is coming out of your tight spot. Grab your neighbor by the hand and tell him neighbor. I said grab him by the hand and tell him neighbor. I'm going to praise him till you come out quickly. Yeah. Listen, listen, God sent that fish to swallow up Jonah. 
what looks like punishment is actually preservation. Because you thought it was going to kill you when it was actually keeping you. Until it gets you to dry land. The turning point for Jonah didn't happen outside the well. It happened inside. Because the biggest turning point of your life is when God changes your heart while you're in a nasty place. Everyone's hands lifted. <clears throat> Everyone's standing. I don't have no problem giving God my all because he's been just that good to me. Can I tell y'all what Jonah means, y'all? I don't know who this is for. But Jonah sends us a message. that you can make a bad decision and God will still bring it out good. When you got purpose on your life, God will redeem you from your bad decisions. Because if he doesn't, that would mean that your sin is more powerful than his purpose. And nothing is more powerful than the purpose of God. Hey y'all, here's the good news. Here's the good news. When Jonah got to land, he finally did go to Nineveh. And nobody ever knew that he was ever a renegade prophet. Somebody hear me. <clears throat> when you get to where God wants you to be, ain't nobody ever gonna know that you was horrible before you got there. Because God knows how to make you look good even when you've been bad. Father, thank you for redeeming us from our bad decisions and placing us back where we need to be. Father, I got a brother or sister here today that thought their life was over because they ended up in an unexpected low. They thought they had it under control. And their rebellion took them lower than what they ever expected. But I pray today that you will resurrect them, give them life, and then make the thing that was holding them sick of them. So they can be released to do what you've called and ordained them to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Can somebody thank God? You've reached your turning point. I said thank God he kept you till you reached your turning point. Quickly, somebody in here needs to be released into the salvation of Jesus Christ. If you're in this church, you see or hear me in this sanctuary or in the virtual sanctuary, this is the time for you to give your life to Jesus Christ. This is the moment where you turn in the right direction towards God. 
because what started with disobedience can end in mercy this is your moment of mercy I beseech you brothers by the brothers and sisters by the mercies of God that you present your body a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service it is by God's mercies that you are not consumed because his compassions do not fail but morning by morning a new mercy you see For great is his faithfulness unto you I'm talking to a brother or sister in here that says pastor I want to give my life to Jesus Christ I want to do it today I'm ready to turn back to him I'm ready to turn back to the temple I'm ready to give my focus back to him I'm ready to be revived by him I'm ready to rejoice in him I'm ready to be released to him if that's you if that's your decision and your desire you got to be willing to believe three things by faith number one You've got to be willing to submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Number two, you've got to be willing to believe that Jesus Christ shed his blood for the remission of your sins. And that he died for you to restore you back into right relationship with God. Number three, you've got to be willing to believe by faith that after being dead for three days, God raised Jesus from the dead to grant us victory over sin and death that we may live eternally with God. If you're willing to believe those three things in your heart and confess that out of your mouth, right now, this day, is the time for you to give your life to Jesus Christ. All I need you to do is grab your smartphone, come out of wherever you're sitting, and just meet me right here at the front. I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to embarrass you. I don't even know your name, but all of us that are saved have made this decision. This is your time and turn. In the balcony, I'm talking to you as well. On the main level, I'm talking to you as well. Online, I'm talking to you. If you'll follow the information that's on the screen, text the keyword JOIN. 478-249-5426. We have people standing by waiting to greet you and receive you into the body of Christ. If you want this church... It'll be the place where you and your family go and grow in God. Will there be one that'll come? Come on, the clergy are standing waiting on your arrival, ready to greet you. Don't wait on nobody else to move. This is your time and your turn. Who is it? Come on. Come on, will there be one that will come? And say, Pastor, it's me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, church, they're coming. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming, church. Let's open up. You don't know. You don't know what he's done for me. I believe it's somebody else here that needs to make this decision. I just don't know your name. You're waiting on others to move. Listen, you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. This is about your soul. I'm not telling you your life is about to be perfect. What I am telling you is that if you receive Jesus Christ, open your heart to receive him. 
He'll change you so that you can go change your own life. But you gotta, it's got to start with you. It's got to start with you. Who is it that says, Pastor, it's me. I want to give my life to the Lord. Come on. This is your day, your time, and your turn. Come on. Wherever you are, we'll wait on you to get up here. These have already come. And we celebrate the Lord for them. Yet there is room at the cross. Fellowship, would you ask everybody around you, are they saved and do they have a church home? If they say no, tell them, I'll walk up there with you. I'll walk up there with you. I'll stand with you. You don't have to come by yourself. They're moving from everywhere. They're coming from the balcony. They're coming from this lower level. Lift your voice. You don't know. Jesus Christ, I want to welcome all of y'all to the body of Christ. Yeah. 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 Is she coming? Come on, church. Welcome them. They're still coming. I told you there was more here. Somebody make her feel welcome. to the body of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. And what you just did was become the latest members of the baddest church in New York. Our church family welcomes you. We greet you with love. We greet you with Jesus Christ. And we welcome you in Jesus' name. Right behind you down this middle aisle is Minister Quincy Hall. If you all will turn around and go down that center aisle and go with him, we'll take you in the back and bring you back shortly. Come on, church, put them all on the red carpet of appreciation. Come on, church, give God praise for these souls. Tell somebody, I've reached my turning point. Tell them, I've reached my turning point. You may be seated in the Lord's church. Hey, church, it's giving time. Let's prepare to give. Let's prepare to give. Let's prepare to give. Let's prepare to give. Those of you that are online, let's prepare to give now faithfully and joyfully unto the Lord for all of his benefits unto us today. Our ushers are in the front. Anyone that would like to use an envelope, raise your hand in the balcony and on the lower level. Ushers are in every aisle. If they see your hand, they will give you an envelope. If you're not using an envelope, we presume you're going to pick one of these other options on all of these screens <laughs> and uh, pick one of them that is most convenient and comfortable for your giving. This is where we share our tithes and offerings to the Lord. 
Keep your hand raised until they see you. Keep your hand raised until they see you. I see a hand here. Two of them. There we go. All right. This is where we share our tithes and offerings, church. Tithing is the first tenth of our income to God. It's the first tenth of our income to God. We've got a hand way up over here in the corner. Right there. There she is. Yeah. They're coming. I got another hand right here. Now, y'all got to raise your hand when I tell you, huh? Let's just go on. Amen. 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 I'm going to be giving through our Shelby Next app. I want to remind you again, ladies and gentlemen, when you do that, go in and manually press one time gift. Manually press one time gift because it is automatically defaulted to recurring gift. So you have to go in and manually press one time gift. Let's pray. Father, thank you. We got something to give and you gave it to us. So we're going to take what you gave us and give it back to you. And we're not going to do it grudgingly, but we're going to do it cheerfully and gladly. Would you bless your people for their obedience now? Even those that are on, 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 on screen and online, wherever they are, Lord, meet their needs as they're giving faithfully unto you. Bless us all for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's give unto the Lord, church. That's right, clap your hands to him. Clap your hands because you got something to give. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I don't know if y'all know, but God is good. No, for real. Like, for real. Like, I'm not playing with y'all. God good, man. He continues to do things that are clearly him in all of our lives. Amen. And so we celebrate him. In Jesus' name. Let me thank you all for your faithful gifts and to, <clears throat> to our visitors. If you're led of God today to give, we praise God for you. And we pray that the blessings of the Lord will be on your life as well for his glory. Amen, amen, amen. What a mighty God we serve. I don't know about you, but I'm getting back on track. I'm getting back on track. Very quickly, our deacons will come forward now. For those of you that have envelopes, would you pass your envelopes to the end of the row? Our deacons will come collect them now. They're coming down the aisles in the lower level and in the uh, balcony. Amen. We don't want you to forget and walk out. Amen. Amen. We don't want you to do that. Do we miss anybody? Do we miss anybody? Raise your hand if we missed you. The usher's right behind you. Raise your hand if we missed you. Amen. Raise your hand if we missed you. I got a hand here. I got a hand there. Raise your hand if we missed you. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, church, very quickly. Y'all, we had 256 people in Wednesdays in the Word this past Wednesday. <laughs> I don't typically do all that counting stuff, but I did it this week because I want to see that number grow. 
So I want to invite all of you to be here Wednesday at 6.30. We're in a powerful series called Christianity 101. I don't just want you to be churchgoers. I want you to be serious about what it means to be a Christian. And we've got to learn the word of God together to defend our faith, to be able to properly communicate Christianity and to be able to live it out in our lives. Amen. So I want to invite you to be here this Wednesday uh, at 6.30 p.m. right here in the sanctuary. We study together for about an hour and uh, we'll let you go. And then on uh, this coming Saturday is our Women of Worth brunch. Amen. Our Women of Worth brunch at the Wellston Center at 11 a.m. Now look, y'all, this is not an open event. It actually is a regist registration event. So those that have registered will be in attendance uh, for this event. Uh, the WOW keynote speaker is their ministry leader, the one and only Lady Lenine Morgan. Amen. Amen. And uh, there'll be other little things going on. It's part of that. It's actually a prayer brunch, right? So there'll be prayers going on uh, as part of that as well. So our Women of Worth uh, will be having that on this coming uh, Saturday. And then on next Sunday, we're coming back together to worship. All of you that have children, I want to invite you to have your children in Lit Nation Youth Worship across the street next Sunday uh, for our Lit Nation uh, worship. We have a worship tailored just for young people. So uh, that's uh, 5 to 4 to 18, ages 4 to 18. Bring in young people and uh, be over there uh, next week. All right? I love you all in Jesus' name. That was last week. Come to church last Sunday. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. All right, come on. Everyone standing. All right, everybody. Garrison is going to give us our closing prayer. I'm going to come down and greet you. And uh, I hope to uh, have an opportunity to greet all of you as many as will. And uh, please be considerate of the person behind you. I said be considerate of the person behind you. Amen. Amen. Close your eyes and bow your head. Lord, we want to thank you for letting us come to church today and having this amazing service, Lord. We also want to thank you for letting us, Lord, drive here safely. So, Lord, can you let us go home safely? In your son Jesus' name, amen.